I completed my medical education and training in, at the University of Baghdad in Iraq. Um, I graduated in 2019, and shortly after that, I started my rotational postgraduate training in various disciplines uh, as a postgraduate training in general practice. Um, it was during the COVID-19 pandemic, and my most notable contributions was working with Doctors Without Borders, and I was part of the COVID-19 ICU project. And then after completing my postgraduate training, I immigrated to Canada uh, after finishing my internship to join my wife in Ottawa. And after moving to Canada, I did observerships in pediatrics and family practice that helped me gain insight into the Canadian healthcare system. And then after that, started working as a clinical assistant uh, at a medical group with family physicians and internal medicine specialists as well. And um, the second point that I want to highlight, there are many uh, or major challenges that I encountered during my residency applications. Uh, first of all is the competitive nature of the process. Um, there are limited number of spots compared to the number of applicants, and that can make it challenging for candidates to secure a position. Uh, a lot of applicants uh, face challenges in achieving competitive scores on the exams as well, like the MCC exams. And even the application itself can be a challenge because at the same time you need strong letters of recommendations, uh, you need a statement, um, and like writing a compelling personal statement or a follow-up application can be challenging. Some applicants face, uh, like interviews can be very stressful and demanding for applicants as well. Personally, I found that navigating the match process was a challenge and uh, the match process itself can be very unpredictable for applicants and you need to be prepared before Canada Online opens and like during the application and after the application is over so that you can work on your interviews. So I found that understanding how the match algorithm works and dealing with uncertainty regarding match outcomes was very important for me to keep me organized as well. And it's at the same time, when you face these challenges, you need a good support system in place. And in order to navigate these challenges, you need to have a good support system. Uh, the stress of relocating to a new place, navigating a completely different healthcare system is a definitely a challenge. And I found that what was essential for me is to have a network of friends and colleagues that help me decompress. I know that when I need some help, I can be confident that I have supportive loved ones and friends to provide assistance. And having a support system and focusing on my mental, spiritual, and physical well-being was essential for me to maintain my whole well-being as, uh, as well. And uh, the other part that I want to talk about is um, what sets you apart from other applicants during the match process is, you know, this is a very hard question, but I'm sure that there were many amazing applicants. I advise future applicants to read the current program description carefully as there is a part that highlights selection criteria and what are the programs looking for in their prospective applicants. So always try to highlight these qualities in your application and to showcase yourself as a competitive applicant. So the specific tips is like, let's, so before moving to Canada, you can just start with familiarizing yourself with the process go through the CARD website and take a look at the program description. There's also program specific requirements. Definitely start preparing for exams early on and work on getting high scores because uh, like exam scores can is a part that can make or break your application. Uh, as well as I'm thinking of like, while you're still in your home country, try to gain as much as clinical experience as possible. And once you move to Canada, you can also achieve that through observerships and clinical rotations if you are still in med school. Uh, familiarize yourself with the Canadian healthcare system. Show genuine interest that, in the field that you're applying to. Um, the other points that uh, increase the chances of matching are just work on your organization. Uh, there are a lot of deadlines in the CARMS application uh and try to be organized as much as you can like having a strong compelling application with strong letters competitive scores and getting your papers and statements ready are essential for the application to be considered for an interviews and there are a lot of like courses or volunteering opportunities that can help you the things that uh, like another thing that program most programs consider are extracurriculars so definitely like participating in community service events, volunteering, advocacy work, 
has its weight on the overall application or selection committee decision. And there are many resources available through the like the N4. Uh, there is this course, uh, the fostering integration of the international educated healthcare professionals. Um, all provide me with resources that help me refine my soft skills and work on my interpersonal skills, which helped me in delivering a better interview and securing a residency position. Um, so the I want to talk a little bit about the N4 resource hub. Uh, this is like a, a destination for resources and reports for international educated healthcare professionals and including like physicians and nurses. Uh, there are a lot, a lot of um, resources available. There are multiple uh, pathways to licensure and like going through residency is one of them. And I found that N4 offers a lot of visual pathways to licensure and it helped me understanding the journey to licensure in Canada a lot. Uh, so provide like clear guidance, uh, breaking down this process into smaller steps. And uh, I found that also the St. Paul University online program has uh, developed uh, to help me, to help generally to help IEHPs gain the non-clinical skills necessary to be successful in healthcare jobs in Canada. I found that also there is a list of initiative opportunities are provided by the Canadian employers, like healthcare organizations, academic institutions also, all in place are to help IEHPs. There is also a conversation cafe, which is uh, through the Enforce meeting place. Uh, it's just basically engaging discussions, idea sharing, networking opportunities with the network uh, community and it's also like a form engagement that allows peer-to-peer -peer support among IEHPs as well.